What's up everybody? Adam here at engineeringsolve.com. I got a new tool for you uh, to calculate the Darcy friction factor, mainly from the, the Moody diagram. Uh, and it's usually buried at the end of a textbook somewhere. It's kind of hard to read. Uh, or maybe you have some tables. The tables can be cumbersome and maybe you got to interpolate once or twice even. Uh, so what I thought, there's got to be an easier way, you know. That's why I made this tool. Let's run through an example here real quick. So let's say you have a hydraulic diameter of 6 inches. Uh, you have a kinematic viscosity. Uh, let's, let's assume we're using water here. So your kinematic viscosity will be 1e to the negative 5 uh, feet squared per second. Now the nice thing about this tool, as you can see, is there's two different ways to calculate your Reynolds number. Uh, usually dv over nu or it's rho dv over mu. Now if you use your kinematic viscosity, your absolute and fluid density deselect to let you know that those aren't needed. Let's put a velocity in here of, uh, I don't know, 10 feet per second. Now conversely, uh, if you put in your absolute viscosity, say approximately 2e to the negative 5 for water, and you the kinematic viscosity will will deselect and you're left with the fluid density as well so about 62.4 uh, pounds per cubic feet now one more thing uh, you have to input is the container material so let's assume this is cast iron pipe so we'll select cast iron and you're given an absolute roughness value for cast iron and then it goes ahead and calculates your relative roughness, which is just your absolute roughness divided by your hydraulic diameter, as well as your Reynolds number, uh, based on, again, these parameters over here. Now, let's say you, you know your relative roughness is, I don't know, this is 0 0.0017. Let's say your relative roughness is a little, little rougher. 0.002. Let's try that. Now if we override in these red boxes, again the calculated version goes away to let you know that the override is in effect. And same thing for Reynolds number, we're getting about, what is that, 48,000? Let's say 50,000. Okay, so same thing for Reynolds number. At this point, if you have both of these overridden, the factors here on the left and above are meaningless at that point. But let's not worry about that for now. Uh, let's remove that. Same thing here for absolute roughness. If the material you're interested in isn't listed here, you can always just input an absolute roughness value um, as you wish. And then again, the uh, selection box goes away. And then you can do this for English or metric units, as you can see here. Now scrolling down, uh, we know that the, rel the Reynolds number is above 4,000, so you're fully turbulent. Uh, really anything above 2,000 is going to be either transitional or turbulent, and in that case the Colebrook-White equation would apply, which is uh, this guy right here. Now it's an implicit form, and it's tricky to calculate, you can't solve explicitly for uh, F, your friction factor, and that's why, that's the whole basis of this tool, essentially, is to get a more accurate friction factor without having to use, you know, an analog table or do a lot of interpolations from, uh, from a chart or something. So, this is pretty accurate. Also, I've included a lot of, uh, uh approximations that people have come up with over the years. So in the 20th century, there was a big push from experts in the field to simplify the Kohlberg-White equation, come up with a, a very good approximation in an explicit form that was more easily or more readily solvable. And, you know, there's a fair amount of people have done this. A couple people have tried it twice. Churchill here in 1973 and 1977 as well as Goudard and Sonnet 
in 2006 and 2008 more recently. Uh, and there may be a few others in here. You can you can look on your own time, see if there's any others. Uh, but it's a it's a nice little feature. I mean, you can see how well the approximations are at different values of friction factor. Some are way off. Uh, and if you go more in depth and research this further, these people, uh, some of them, they explain, you know these equations or these approximations are only good for a certain range of uh, Reynolds number and or rel uh, relative roughness values. So be aware of that. But still, you really want the Colbert-White equation. You really want this. This is the granddaddy, really, of all of them, and it still holds true, and it's still the best uh, to use. So moving down here, we have the Moody diagram recreated in Excel, uh, Excel chart form. And we have our point plotted here uh, with our uh, relative roughness and our Reynolds number. So our relative roughness is 2 to the negative 3, which is basically this line. It's overlapping uh, this bold red line here. And as well as your Reynolds number is 48,000, which is right here. This is 10,000. This is 100,000. And 48,000 is somewhere right here. And then it brings a line over here. You're, if you read this off the graph, you'd say maybe 0 0.024, I would, I would guess. And that's about as good as you can get from a textbook. And here we have a more accurate value, 0 0.0238. Okay, so moving on. Let's say, let's say you are in the laminar regime. Let's just override this for now. Let's say your Reynolds number is only 1,500. Now the nice thing about this is that now you are in the laminar regime, obviously, it says laminar here, and you're using the hagen poiseuille equation at that point, which is the friction factor is equal to 64 divided by your Reynolds number. Very simple. And all of these approximations are deselected. You can kind of still see them, and you can kind of still see the percent error, but these approximations all apply to the uh, turbulent regime. So they're no, no longer applicable. If we go down here to the graph, again, this point is plotted along the laminar, uh, laminar line, and then you can read your friction factor, maybe 0 0.041, 415, 42, something like that. And we're getting 0 0.0427. So much more accurate again. Now, the nice thing about this tool is, let's say you have a Reynolds number between two and 4,000. Uh, therefore, you'd be in the transitional regime. Uh, it could be, could be um, laminar in some areas, could be turbulent in others. So let's just put 3,000 in here to indicate transitional. It's marked here, transitional, and still we're using the Colbert white equation since it's conservative. And then we'll go down to the graph here. Now what I've done here is, within this regime, when the, when the lines are both dotted between 2,000 and 4,000 uh, Reynolds number, the friction factor is could be really a range of values because the flow is unsteady. So I've plotted some range, but yet this maximum point is somewhere between 0 0.04 and 0 0.05, which is reflected here, 0 0.0453. Now that's about all for this tool. I uh, hope you guys liked it. You can go to engineeringsolve.com excel. We got a lot of free tools there for your use. Hope you enjoy.